Hi, on today's episode, we have a guest, and the guest is my sister. We're talking about dropping out of school, but there is some talk that borders on suicide and depression. Uh, so this is a trigger warning before you go into the episode. Okay. Hi. Welcome to today's episode of A Couple of Things. Today I have a guest. I was recording this like live on the Anchor app. Um, I was just going to talk about graduating or not graduating, not finishing school. <laughs> Why does it graduate? We're talking about dropping out of school. And the guest is my sister. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Tunta. Okay. Hi, Tunta. So let's just go straight into it because we have to do this in like 10 minutes. Why did you drop out of school? Short story, and the short version is that it was making me extra suicidal. Mm. And at what point did you decide that you had enough? This was um, 2021, April. I went back to school because, oh, what's up? Okay, exams were like a week away. This was 400 level first semester. Exams were a week away. I went back to school. And then the next day, I kind of, not kind of, I had like a serious breakdown. And I was like, yeah, I found solutions to my problem of not wanting to study law. I'm going to have to die because you can't drop out if they are dead. You can't go to school if they are dead. I don't know why I feel like dying solutions to everything. I mean, it kind of is, but yeah. I sent a voice note. I don't know if you remember, I sent a voice note to the group chat with you and Lashet talking about how I couldn't continue, that I was going to die or kill myself or could have said death and dying in those. I was going to have to take warning or something. So yeah, I was complaining about how I couldn't continue and this and that. And then Lashet, for those of you that don't know, Lashet is our brother. Lashet called me like almost immediately and was like, I'm not continuing that thing. Like, I'm like, how does he know that? What does he, what does he want to do? That's so what am I going to do if I don't continue at uni like this and that? I was like, I should just forget about all those ones that you handle the talking to parents if he needs to and all of them. And that's it. And then yeah. like a couple of days after I went to the psychiatric hospital um, with my roommates, because my roommates came came back from school or wherever she went on this. I can't remember where she went that day, but she came back. And I told her that I wanted to drop out or die. And she was like, what? She basically, she was like, yeah. Tonta, you really need to go to psychiatric hospital and I'm not going to let you go alone. So we went a few days later. We couldn't go the next day because she had like a test or something. Yeah. So it just goes to show the importance of support, right? Like having people who can hold your hand through the difficult situations of your life, be that dropping out of school or dealing with suicidal ideation okay um so but i remember when like you told me that you were dropping like you wanted to drop out after like last called you and everything and my first thing was like we <laughs> we talked about this since like living law so yeah what made you stay yeah. until like your fourth year because you were almost at the end of the fourth year and you then decided to drop out or to leave the program so what made you stay that oh, long, even though you knew you were not, like, thriving there? Sometimes I don't even like saying I tired to study a bit to drop out. It feels like my, my brain and body forced me to drop out. Because mm. I know just... So basically, what made me decide to leave is, like, I just couldn't continue. I feel like... I, mean, I felt like I was under so much pressure. But, like, nobody was putting me under pressure because... Most people in the family had told me not to study law. You told me not to study law. My mom told me not to study law. My dad told me not to study law. But I was so stubborn. I said, no, I'm going to study law. I think that's what made me continue, even though in like here, so I realized that, okay, I don't want to do this thing. But at the same time, I'm like, I don't want to start over. I also don't even know what exactly to do. And I'm like, I did. I'll finish in how many years, which was crazy because it's uni lab. You don't know when you finish. You say, I might finish at this point, but serious might. Anyway, I'm like, yeah, I'll finish it now. And then I think 
that COVID year, because I think that, that year made everything much worse, like one whole or almost one whole year of just being at home because mm-hmm. of lockdown. Because of the lockdown. And I think it was also strike at the time as well. I think there was an ASU strike at that period. Very so, long strike. Uh, and then I think I'm not going to law school. I couldn't tell that I didn't want to continue law because it didn't make sense. I was literally at the end and I didn't even know what to say I was going to do instead of finishing law or continuing with law. So I just am not going to law school. I said, that's fine. No problem. When the time comes, we'll revisit it. Yeah. And I think I I was looking through my old blog and I saw a post where I had written that. I told my mom that I didn't want to go to uni again. And she was like, okay, what do you want to do instead? I don't remember the conversation, but like reading that and like when you were like, you're not going to law school again. And eventually you said you were going to drop out um, from the law undergraduate program. She was really chill about it. And I just think that, again, the importance of like when you have people who support you through your decisions, it, it makes you feel less like stressed and pressured about it. Because even though me and you had that conversation about like, you're not happy in this law program that you're doing. It doesn't seem to be vibing well with you. You were so able to talk to me because you knew that I would support you with that decision. Right? Yeah. Or, also, like, is that why? Eh? I said, although you said I shouldn't drop out, I should take a year off. Yeah, I mean, because, like, my first instinct is that back. I should go. Right, like that's my first Sorry? instinct, and I talked about it on the previous episode of the podcast. That like my first instinct is stay in school, but um, when I like I knew how you were feeling and everything, so I was like, take a break first, right, before making the commitment to like cut off the whole thing. Because like that's my thing. I'm always like, try the small version of whatever it is you want to do. <laughs> so my credentials dropping out. <laughs> big, no, 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 jumping out of school is a big deal right like it's a big yeah, journey actually. when you spend so much time in that process mm-hmm. so it's like always like just try a small version like i remember my friend was telling me that she wanted to go back to school and do a master's program in in counseling psychology and everything i was like how about let's start with an online course that is like a couple of weeks and we found one and she did it. And when she finished, she was like, yeah, I don't think I want to go to, to do masters. <laughs> <laughs> in this thing, right? So it's like, find the small version, which is why I suggested that you, you take the year off. But when, when we started that process and, and I was just like, you know what, it's okay. Just, just leave the program. <laughs> <laughs> and we'll figure the rest out afterwards. But okay, so after you dropped out of school, what happened? I know that there were, there were a lot of things in between the talking about maybe you should take a break versus dropping out and when you actually drop that but let's keep all of that part when you actually made the decision to drop out mm-hmm. and you told everyone what happened i mean i know what okay, happened so but like for the sake I of the, 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 the day i went to the psychiatric hospital and i told mommy and then i told her like in the evening because i didn't want her to come and pick me from school express herself and then by like Nine or ten, she shows up at my hostel gate and is like, Oh, yeah, let's go home. And I'm like, What do you mean, let's go? Home? I have exam next. said, Okay, and so let's go. Home. And I'm like, No, I'm not going home. Boy, you wanted to drop out of school. What are you thinking about? I wrote only one exam. Yeah, so like, I wrote only one exam and I didn't even write it properly. Then I was in school the whole time, just staying in my hostel, not going out, not doing anything. And then the last day I went back home, I told my mom that, Oh, I didn't write any exams by the way, except one, and that one I'm going to finish. Like, no problem. As far as you are okay. Oh, it's with girl. So, but right. besides like the love and affirmation from mommy, me, and Lashe, <laughs> what else? Happened? Oh, it was not support. Oh, my father was so against it. <laughs> ah, oh God. Yeah. Even last night, he still mentioned me going back to finish it, and I'm like. What do you mean? But after going through the whole decision of dropping out of school, what's like, what did you do afterwards? Like, how did you find your oh, next step or your footing? I wouldn't even still say I found next step. You told me about Next Forge that, mm-hmm. oh, do this online school. You told me since 2020, actually. I'm like, 
this babe free me Joe. What's all this? And I then we're well, like, obviously, yes, I you. suggested an option. And we should have brought it up. That's the point. You brought it up. And I'm like, this babe free me. <laughs> and then in 2021, I'm like, okay, it's like that's what I'll do last, last. Because really, what, what else could I have done? I mean, there are other things I could have done. But like, I did not really sit down and start thinking, mm, these are my interests. These mm. are the things I'm not interested in. I said that I know what to do lawyer. Yeah, you were like over studying law. Do you think it was the law degree itself or it was being in Unilag that was the issue? I, mean, I think it's being in Unilag. But, <laughs> but I, let me just I honestly can't say it because it's not like I'm it's not like I've tried to study law anywhere else. So I, okay. I don't know. Okay. But All yeah, being in Unilag was a very big factor, a very big one. Yeah. I think that's because I also went to Unilag and although my experience was not as bad as your own, I also like struggled <laughs> at some point <laughs> with like dropping out, no, not dropping out, but with like stress of I'm tired of this, <laughs> I don't want to do a game. But I guess because it wasn't as bad as like in the situation where you were starting to have suicidal ideations, like escape distress, then it wasn't like the same. But I think when I dropped out of grad school, it was because I was, and I was so stressed out about dropping out of grad school because it didn't fit with my self concepts. Like, I'm not a person that drops out of school. Like, professor. Eh? Professor. You get like, <laughs> so, I I professor. You professor. so it didn't fit with my self concept. And it was a struggle because it was like, I knew that this is not working anymore. And in fact, the thing that, that made the decision for me really was that the program started online, but then they were going to switch to in-person because of COVID, like COVID restrictions were being let go and everything. And I had taken a semester break, but then I took another semester break. And in the second semester break, I had even paid my semester fee. And I was like, this doesn't make any sense. You're probably not going to travel for this course. So just let's go. And is that thing about being afraid to let go of something that you've committed so much time to and money and resources. So the thing that helps you overcome that, I guess, is what we already talked about, like people who support you through that process and make you feel seen and heard and make you realize that you're not crazy and it's okay to let things go. Right. All right, final question on the topic of dropping out of school. Would you do anything differently about the process of like, not now, not like what other people said or did, but like you personally, is there anything you'd have done differently? Like knowing now what you know that you didn't know then? So I can't say for sure if there's anything I would have done differently because, again, the whole circumstance surrounding me living and my state of mind, all those things, I'm not sure what I can say I would have done differently. But if I also advise somebody, I'll tell them that they should they should try and, like, relax. Things are not as serious as they think they are. Okay, they might be that serious for some people. Actually, they don't have the support. But for the most part, it's not that serious. It's really not. So calm down sleep is <laughs> drink water then think about again do i really want to leave this thing do research like proper research not oh okay this is what is available and i don't want to do this thing again so let me go and do this one that is available because you might still be entering another wahala mm. but yes thankfully it has worked out so far for me and it's so easy to say all these things to somebody but the implementation is a problem because i mean if i'm putting situation again I don't know that I will not do what I did before, but I hope I wouldn't start. Like, I hope yeah. I appreciate it better. I mean, I feel like for me, for in my own dropping out, it's like I should have just dropped out sooner, like instead of dragging it and 
trying to do semester breaks. I should have just left. I mean, I have just, it wasn't working. I should have left. Two people told me to switch in like year one or year two. Told me to buy change of course form. <laughs> I did not answer. I should have answered. <laughs> But yeah, I guess like these are all the things that make up part of our story and our journey. And we learn from the situations that we experience. Although it would be nice to not like experience the, <laughs> the situation. Right, right. <laughs> oh my okay, god, so... one last thing I would like to say. Sorry to cut you off, but okay. I think the fact that doing last place was so cheap made it easier to drop out, even though it was still so hard. Yeah. So I'm like, uh-uh. Because then it was still 15k. I'm like, ah, it's 15k now. <laughs> now yeah, okay. when you like, like home count, a lot of money had gone into it. Yeah, exactly. When I, I was still well. in a very anxious state, I'm like, ha, huh. I didn't even think of money then. But I looked at about yeah. that. Hello, me. Like, how much is it? Tell me, I have an international audience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, Hello, me means how much? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, yeah, I was going to say that because for me as well, because I paid semester fees, but it wasn't like paying school, like tuition. It wasn't tuition fees. I feel like if I had paid tuition fee of like 10K, 18K <laughs> euros, I probably would not have jumped out of that program. <laughs> but, what do you mean? <laughs> but like, because I hadn't spent so much money on it, it was easier. And I think that is something to also think about. Like, what are the things that are making us hold on to things even though we know we should let go of it and maybe if i had asked for a refund i'd probably got it i don't know but because i got a refund on the semester fee that i paid the semester that i broke out um um dropped out of so you never know you never know um but yeah cool so what are you up to these days what are you doing again i know what you're doing (laughs) (laughs) what am i doing am i doing anything well i'm doing my school work like i should be done by june and yeah, um, have you? I'll finally have degree after almost ten years of living secondary school. <laughs> well, better late than never. Or how do you? No, that's how they say. Yeah, so it's not. There's no like fixed time for when it's best time to do something. There's just a map that everybody thinks that everybody must follow. But you don't have to follow that map. You can choose your own map and choose your own journey. Cool. Okay, and I your map. What? You can edit your map. You can edit your map exactly. That's it. Thank you so much for sharing with me and my on my podcast and being the first guest of my podcast. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining me on today's episode of a couple of things if you enjoyed this episode or found any part of it insightful don't forget to share with your friends on your social media and be sure to leave a comment or a review if you can on your podcast listening app thank you